watching News Talk with Julia Cosby at the International News Channel. Premier Doug Ford tweeted yesterday, no one wants kids back in school more than I do, but as Premier, these aren't risks I'm willing to take, unquote. He also said that he is so hopeful the Ontarians may be able to safely enter stage one earlier than June 14th. Ford's tease of an earlier return to patios and a limited number of customers in non-essential stores came simultaneously as he maintained that it is not safe for schools to resume in-class learning until September. This is because of the more contagious COVID-19 variants identified in India and that is already prevalent in the United Kingdom. New Democrat leader Andrew Horvath accused Premier Ford of sending mixed messages. Moreover, a source from the hospitality industry noted that uncertainty about their early reopenings within days of creating a last-minute scramble to schedule staff, order perishable foods and beverages from suppliers. To discuss the situation, I'm joined with Conservative MPP Rudy Cazetto from the Mississauga Lakeshore Riding. Welcome MPP Cazetto. Premier Doug Ford tweeted yesterday, no one wants kids back in school more than I do. But as Premier, these aren't risks I'm willing to take. NDP leader Andrew Horvath said earlier that we could have had kids in school much more often during this pandemic, but Doug Ford just did not want to make the investment. How would you respond to the opposition leader's remarks? Well, that is totally incorrect. And the Premier does want the kids back in school, and so do I. But risking where we are right now, we're looking at two to three weeks left to the school year. And if if something does happen in the schools and we're going to have to shut down the rest of the province moving forward, especially our kids going to, our, to their day camps and camp, overnight camps during the summer, you know, I don't I would not want to take that risk right now. And we've invested a lot of money during this pandemic in education to protect our children and our teachers as well. And, you know, it will give us more time to get more teachers vaccinated as well as our, our students, too. Uh, and, you know, and I'm so grateful that approximately 50,000 teachers, sorry, 50 uh, percent of the teachers have been vaccinated up to this point. So I'm really happy that they have gotten vaccinated. And I hope that it will continue going up and more and more people get vaccinated so we can move forward going through the summer and hoping September will be a new year for everyone and a great start for our children. How would you respond to claims that your government in making the decision to open up patios and non-essential businesses would rather than schools has prioritized economy over children? Do you do you think that's fair or not so much? I, I don't I don't think that's fair because like the premier himself said that, you know, we want the summer to be great for our kids in their camps, in you know, outdoor activities for them. And you know, and that's what we have to look at. It's moving forward. And and as well as the economy too, and let's get everything going and let's open up gradually like we're, we're trying to do and get into stage one, which will be happening shortly. Toronto's top doctor once expressed having a lot of hope that students may be able to return to class before the end of the school year, but this is not happening. What is your take on this? Well, uh, yes, yeah, so the doctors uh, had have a lot of hope of uh, having our kids return to school earlier. Uh, but, you know, with an 11% increase of cases, if we do let our, our children go indoors, you know, we don't want to risk that for the summer because I think, you know, the kids need to be at this summer, the ones that can go to camps and do outdoor activities. I think that would be more important for our children right now. There are fears that Ontario may enter the fourth wave of the pandemic. How is your government planning to avoid the fourth wave of this pandemic in our province? And be honest, that is our worry beyond going, get, hitting the fourth wave. And I hope it does not happen. But that's why we've been lobbying the federal government to shut down non-essential travel and tighten the, the land borders as well. If you look at the non-essential travel, as soon as the federal government st uh, stopped direct flights from India, it was a matter of hours that the airline companies were rerouting the flights to other countries and then into Canada. And we know right now that our hospitals have approximately 40% of their cases are the variants. And let's be honest, the variants did not swim here. It had to come here by mm -hmm. air. So, you know, and this is our concern because if we don't have the second dose 
into people by the end of the summer, which I hope we will, because the, the vaccines have finally started to arrive here and we are putting them in people's arms. If you notice that we do an average of 135,000 to 190,000 vaccines a day. So if that keeps going like we are, we should be you know, pretty well you know, with the second dose by the end of the summer. Well, the Premier is hopeful that Ontarians may be able to safely enter stage one earlier than June 14th. The opposition accuses the Premier of sending mixed messages. How would you defend this? Well, I look at it that we are look, we're speaking with the doctors right now. The numbers have uh, started to decline that we've noticed over the last uh, week. So, uh, you know, I think that if we can open it early, I agree with the Premier. Let's open it early with the, the consent of the doctors agreeing that we can open earlier. When does your government anticipate that the province economy will be fully reopened? Well, it, it, that's a tough question because yes. it depends on the, on the variants, right? If we, if we have vaccines in people's arms, I can see the economy personally being open by September. Okay, people within the hospitality industry are concerned about the uncertainty attached with the likelihood of last-minute scramble to schedule staff and order perishable foods and beverages from suppliers. How is your government planning to alleviate these concerns? Well, we're trying our best. We're just waiting right now for the doctors to give us their consent of when they think that we could open earlier. And as soon as we have that information, we will give it to our restaurant owners and our hospitality industry. There has been discussion about the rise of mental health concerns during this pandemic, especially with the constant lockdowns. What is your government's strategy to ensure that Canadians are supported during these difficult times? Well, beyond, we're the first government that ever appointed a minister of, of mental health, Minister Tobolo. And Minister Tobolo is working very hard in, you know, at, on his portfolio. And I, going forward, I know that we're going to have the investments we need for our province of Ontario. Throughout this pandemic, we have experienced a cycle of lockdowns followed by easing of restrictions and then lockdowns again. What is your government doing to ensure that they break the cycle, that's it, and we do not enter another lockdown? Well, it's easier said than done, right? That's uh, like our, our idea is not to lock down this province again. But, you know, like I'm always worried about this variance that due to the fact that the borders are not shut and due to the fact that non-essential flights are still coming into the province. You know, and those are always our worries. If you know, like we said, now we're looking at the, the variance, 600% of the cases are the variance in the province of Ontario. So, sorry, the increase, is, it's gone up, sorry, 600%. So that is always our worry is the variance of concern. And, you know, like I said, if, uh, if we can get vaccines in people's arms as quick as we can with the supply that is coming in, we should have a great summer moving forward. What precautions can Ontarians take to help combat the spread of COVID-19? The first precaution is wear a mask, you know, sanitize your hands, but get vaccinated. Vaccinations are the, are the key to it because you've seen other countries that have been vaccinated that are getting out of this pandemic. So I know that uh, being locked down, a lot of people are, you know, kind of feeling some social anxiety. I know that the Euro Cup is coming up. I'm not sure if you'll be watching that. And if so, um, are you excited for it? And who will you be rooting for? Well, uh, you know, my background's Italian, so I'll be rooting for the Italian team. I'm a big fan of, uh, the, I'm a big fan of Juventus. I have uh, many jerseys signed by the players because I have a good friend that, was a former player for Juventus, Roberto Petica, and I've I've had him at Queens Park as well. And he, you know, every every time I g I give him a call, he always sends me a jersey signed by one of the players. I've had you know the Ronaldo jersey signed. I have a Buffon jersey signed. I and his own uh, Roberto Petica uh, jersey signed. And I have a Dibolo as well in my office. I and be, the funny thing about the Dibolo uh, jersey is he was the first soccer player that had COVID too in Europe. Wow. So, you know, it, it, it's all fitting too, but I, I'm a big <laughs> soccer fan and I will be cheering for Italy. Um, but I was born here, so, you know, but I, my roots are Italian. So I will always cheer for my, you know, my, my, my roots team, right?
<laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you, MPP Rudy Cazetto, for joining me today. It was a pleasure. It was my pleasure for being here, and thank you for having me on your show today. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you at home for tuning in. This is News Talk at the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby, and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date on the latest news stories from across the globe.